for now, I'm just going to show you the uh, the website and how to obtain the information on the stuff uh, like plugins, etc. So again, we have okay. So share screen. Okay, I, I hope you see my screen now. So uh, if you go to um, Google and type image J, it will send you to the uh, options. And from these options, you see the first link to the official site. And the official site is belonging to NIH. NIH is the uh, National Institute of Health. So this National Institute of Health is the governmental uh, company. And uh, a lot of scientists work there. So what happens here? We have the program written by scientists for scientists, okay? So that's why it's so cool and uh, it's so powerful because the people who created this program they actually knew the uh, the needs of scientists because they are scientists themselves. They also created a lot of ways to interact with this um, program. So you can create macros, you can create plugins, you can write scripts, whichever is mm, more appropriate for you, which, whichever is more comfortable for you. So if you go to the image J, so from here, you can get to the main page and here you can have the documentations. So let's say you um, see it for the first time in your life. And of course you go to intro and it actually tells you what is going on with the program. So how to tweak it, how to uh, get familiar with the interface and tools used in this Mm. used in this program. So also the shortcuts, etc. So you have the tutorials and examples. Uh, I have uh, this uh, record now and I'm going to finish the processing in about 40 minutes so that uh, in about an hour you will receive the link to the uh, my tutorial and my example files, okay? So also uh, in this, um, on this web, web page, you could see the links. So links here uh, in the above section and links here. So here you would see a lot of packages and libraries that are spread with this ImageJ program. So you have software based on ImageJ and from this software, um, there are stuff that is related to physics, so astrophysics here. The ones that we really want to know are the MBF collection. MBF is uh, the Canadian um, group of scientists who created their own distribution of ImageJ. They included the, uh, the files uh, with documentation, so uh, they have a very advanced documentation on the plugins that they included in this um, distribution of ImageJ. Also, you will want to know about the Fiji project. Fiji projects is um, the uh, distribution too, and it's mostly used by the biologists. So uh, I choose MBF plugin collection and the Fiji one. So if we take the MBF collection, you can go to the McMaster uh, biophotonics facility. And from their site, you can obtain the whole information on the uh, documentation. Oh, let's do it like this. So you just ty type MBF image J and it directly gets you to, um, just a second, I hope they didn't kill the page, so 
Okay, so it's here. Uh, the site is called imagej.net uh, slash mbf. So from here, you can find all the manuals, all the functions uh, about, well, it's documentation about the plugins that are used with this MBF collection. Uh, also, what is um, nice here, I mean, on this site, is that uh, we have now two um, different versions of the program. So the one that was used in the creation of MBF uh, image J, it was the first version. Now we have more advanced version, which is 64-bit system version. So it, um, it uses much more resources of our system. I mean, the 64-bit system. And in this case, it uh, processes much, the images much faster in, in a better way. So the general uh, recommendation is to use the latest second version and second version is also, um, you can find it here, so image J2. Uh, why it's different? Because they now use a different uh, engine for, uh, for the program. They also have the updater and the launcher. So it's a little, a little different, but uh, all the plugins are compatible uh, between these image J1 and image J2 versions. So what's uh, cool about the Fiji, they are using the newest version of the image J. So here you can see the download link. And if you click on this arrow here, you will see the different versions of the program. So if you are using 32-bit uh, operating system, you should uh, choose it because uh, the 64-bit will crash on your PC. Also, if you are using Linux or Mac OS, it's, uh, it's up to you to use whichever of those. Okay, so here on Fiji, you could also choose the, um, the documentation part. So go to Wiki, and from Wiki, you can go to Learn. So Learn here, and from Learn, you go to plugins. So here you see the list of all available uh, plugins that come with the standard edition of the Fiji. And of course, if you go to, for example, background substructor, uh, you can see the whole explanation of this uh, of this plugin. So here they show, <coughs> sorry, they show the link to the PDF file. So it's kind of convenient to know what you are doing within this program. So if you take the, the usual image J, the first set. So, okay, so it's not this one. If you take the first version and go to plugins, not all of them have these descriptions. Okay, so um, it kind of play and learn uh, stuff because not everyone is good at explanation of the uh, of the technical stuff. So people just create the plugins and leave them as it is. So it's a very general practice. And then some enthusiasts like Fiji or MBF, they start uh, creating the documentation. Okay, so about the um, about the image J and Fiji. It's all understood now. So you download it. It's about uh, 300 megabytes. So it's not too long to, to do. Okay, so let's add this. Okay, so in your downloads, you will see the zip file and you don't need any uh, archive applications to open it, usual uh, file explorer on your PC should be able to extract it. So here you see the um, folder with the image J uh, extracted to. 
So we have this executable file, and after open it, so double click on it, you will see such window. So here we have the um, view of your window. So we have the menu uh, on top, and in inside the first two um, options, it's very familiar to usual uh, Word, etc. So the stuff about images uh, starts here. So we have the uh, image menu, and inside it we have the type. So we could change the bits of our image grayscales. So from 32 to 8, or from 8 to 32. So it's quite flexible to change. So sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes when you work with your uh, images from microscope, you might need to convert it to 8-bit to work uh, with the plugins. So let's say that there is a group of scientists who created the plugin that uh, uses only 8-bit. That's why you will need to change it to 8-bit. Then we have the adjust. So from the adjust, you will be using the brightness and contrast a lot. For almost all of the papers, uh, images, you would need to use the brightness and contrast. In this case, you are not tweaking the image, so you don't remove parts of the image uh, with the details. You just uh, make sure that uh, people could see the details that otherwise would not be seen on the image, okay? So what else from this uh, image menu that you're going to use a lot is the color. Uh, Submenu. In this submenu, you will see split channels. So this is for RGB, for example. You you have the RGB uh, file, and you want to use different tweaks for the different channels. So you split the channels, or you obtain the fluorescent microscopy images. Uh, so they are black and white in different channels. So you want to merge them, so you can. Uh, pseudo colorize them and see uh, the the lookup tables. Okay. Also from this uh, color submenu, uh, you could change the uh, stack to RGB. So it's almost the same as merge channels. So next, you would also use the stacks. From the stacks, you could. Um, and create the 3D projects, for example. I will, I will be showing it in the uh, tutorial that I'm going to upload today on YouTube. So you will be able to see how, how to work with this 3D project. Then the hyperstacks. The hyperstacks you are going to use in the tracing or tracking of the uh, vesicles that we done uh, on last session. If you remember, we were taking pictures of the cell, and we were seeing how the um, how the vesicles move from one part of the cell to another. So, okay, so um, we have a huge menu here only for processing of the images. So, from here, of course, uh, the noise removal, etc. Then the application of the masks. So you could create binary mask where uh, the whole image becomes uh, black and white. So in this case, let's say that you have the nuclei called DAPI, uh, with the DAPI. So this DAPI channel uh, is quite visible uh, if you compare it to the background. So you apply the binary mask, so now only the nuclei are seen on your, uh, on your image. And because you could apply these binary mask, you can also remove or subtract the background, et cetera, et cetera. So this is uh, a huge computational part of this program. That's why a lot of people do use it. So mm, instead of using the MetExpress uh, or Zen, um, the, they use Fiji or ImageJ because it's more flexible and it gives you much more uh, tools to to process your your images. Okay, so this part is mm, 
computational part. Now we have the analyze part and analyze part is about the uh, image itself and how we uh, obtain the profiles of the, of the pixels, et cetera, et cetera. So for example, you could get the histogram. If you remember on the first um, lessons, I was showing you the histogram that was shown uh, in, the, uh, in the Zen program. And this actually is the same. So let's, let me show you, okay. So you drag and drop uh, your file here. So this is the file, the, the MOS um, from, from the previous um, lessons. And here on this side, you can see, for example, the um, dimensions. So we have 666 uh, microns uh, across and along. Okay, so we have the lengths and the widths of 666 microns, or in pixels is 2048 pixels square. It also tells us that it is 16 bit camera. And um, this data, it comes from the uh, metadata of the image. So when, when you take the um, image on your microscope, it reads also the setup of the microscope. So it tells you the uh, physical dimensions of the pixels. So let's say one pixel is only 0 0.3 microns um, wide and 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.3 microns uh, long. So it tells you the physical dimension and this physical dimension is written on your, on your um, image file, okay? So now I'm going to use, unfortunately I cannot show it here in the Zoom, so it will be easier for you to see it in the tutorial that uh, I'm going to post today. But I chose the line uh, tool, and now I have this line across the, um, across my image, okay? So I'm going to show you the, uh, the feature again. Here I choose Analyze and press Plot Profile. And this will create the profile of the pixels only under this uh, line that I drew before, okay? So I pressed on the creation of this profile and it looks like this. If you go back to the image and see how I did the line, you will actually see that, okay, so we have black, 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 then it goes white, white, then it goes black again. So it's a tip of one, uh, one, one leaf. Then we have a bunch of leaves Finally, we have a uh, uh, very tip of the last tip uh, of the last leaf. So I can show it like this now. So black one leaf uh, with the pikes of the intensity, then a bunch of leaves. Then we have the gap again, black gap, and a very small tip which, shown, which is shown as the peak on our plot okay so when we go back to our plot so here you can see the distance in microns so the start of our line and the end of, the, of our line okay so actually the thing about this image j is that it gives you overwhelmingly huge amount of information and you will never see any other uh, image editors, especially the ones provided by the huge companies like um, Zeiss or uh, MetaExpress, they kind of cap your abilities in these uh, kind of official applications. So that's why uh, the, uh, the image J was created to overcome this um, burden, okay? So this is about 
the profiling or analyze submenu. So, so here we have the analyze again. And from here also we set the scale. Uh, but because of the metadata that we had in our uh, image, uh, we don't need to set the scale because it it already shows uh, it already knows the uh, uh, dimensions in microns. What you could do here, you could check the tools and from here choose the scale bar. Then you have the mm, the settings for your scale bar. So you don't see them, but I'm going to set it up now and show the. Um, the result. Okay, so beat lower right. Okay. So this is the result of the previous action, the action of uh, addition of scale bar. So here you see the scale bar now. And it actually tells you the uh, dimensions. So from here to here, we have only one micron. Uh, 30 microns, okay. So we go next. Next, we have a huge plugins uh, menu. And in this one, you have uh, a lot of stuff that was created by other scientists. And you can read uh, through the explanation of all these plugins and understand if you uh, really want to use it in your research and data analysis. So um, good stuff that uh, you could do yourself is macros. So it's just automation of your work. So let's say you need to apply the mask of the nuclei for um, 10,000 images. Uh, making it one by one with your hands is kind of time consuming, etc. So it's, it's it's not something that you would, would want to do. The better thing is to write or record the macros, or even better is to uh, create a script here or even plugin and then apply it for uh, the whole folder with your images. Um, of course, you can download the plugins uh, from the uh, third party sites and install them, and they will, of course, appear here. Next, we have the stuff that will help you in tutorials, etc. You could also check for updates. So this is the general overview of the image J. So you will need to wait for the, um, the video that I'm going to post.